Hello everyone, in this video I test the sleep tracking accuracy of the Garmin Venue 2 by comparing it against a scientific EEG device. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In this video, I'll take a look at the sleep tracking accuracy of the Garmin Venue 2. Specifically, I'll check if it can correctly predict the different sleep stages and total sleep duration. With that I mean, can it detect correctly when you're in deep sleep, light sleep and REM sleep? Additionally, I want to check if it can detect when I fall asleep and wake up and if it can also detect the moments I woke up during the night. A few months ago, I tested the Garmin Venue SQ for its sleep tracking accuracy, and it did not do that well. However, the Garmin Venue 2 now uses the first beat analytic sleep detection algorithm, which many of my followers have commented might work better. The first beat analytics algorithm uses things like heart rate, heart rate variability, respiration rate, movement, and time of day to estimate your sleep stages. In this video, I'll put that to the test and see how well it actually performs. In a future video, I'll do an even more comprehensive set of scientific tests on the Venue 2, testing it for additional nights and also looking at heart rate monitoring, oxygen saturation measurements and step counting. For now, let's take a look at the results for the sleep test. For the sleep comparison, I wore the Garmin Venue 2 to bed for 4 nights and at the same time I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device can actually measure your brain waves and muscle movements and is therefore ideal for measuring your sleep stages. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. Now I couldn't find any way to export the data from Garmin in enough detail, so I ended up manually copying the data and loading it into the coding language I use. Now to the results I obtained, let's first have a look at the accuracy over the four individual nights, after which I'll do a statistical overview analysis. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top you can see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the time of night and as you can see I went to bed around midnight. On the vertical axis we have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. The sleep stages are plotted in the same order that they usually displayed in research. On the bottom you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded by the venue 2. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we see a decent overlap between the deep sleep recorded by the Venue 2 and that by the EEG device. The Venue 2 detected the longer deep sleep segment almost perfectly, however it did miss the second deep sleep segment completely. Looking at light sleep marked here in cyan, we see that most of what was light sleep was indeed also detected as being light sleep. If it was confused, it seems to be mostly confused with awake time and also a bit with REM sleep. REM sleep detection is not great for this night. There's definitely some overlap, but enough REM sleep is missing or predicted at the wrong time that I would say the Venue 2 did not perform well. To see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep and light sleep together called non-REM and always ends in REM. The not so great REM sleep detection we saw before basically means it's impossible to see the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Garmin Venue 2. Now the sleep start and sleep end detection marked here in yellow brown were okay-ish for this night. In both cases though there was a significant delay. The venue 2 detected me falling asleep too late and waking up too early. Now this is the second night I tracked. Deep sleep detection is again pretty good. Most of the deep sleep I had was detected and also at the right time which is a positive sign. Detecting light sleep again marked in cyan was also pretty good. Most of the light sleep I had was indeed detected as light sleep and if it was confused it was mostly confused with the wake time. REM sleep detection was a bit better for this night. 3 out of the 4 REM sleep segments were detected and just the first shorter one was missed. It also detected a bit of extra REM sleep near the end of the night. Overall though, for this night it was not bad. This also means that we would be able to see some of the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Venue 2. Sleep end detection was really good for this night, with the Venue 2 correctly detecting when I awoke. 
However, sleep start detection was again slightly delayed. Now for the final two nights, I just wanna show you the most important highlights. First, looking at deep sleep, we see that for the third night, both deep sleep segments were detected. However, I did detect some extra deep sleep in the second half of the night. For the fourth night, we see that the second deep sleep segment was detected, however the first one was missed and also some extra deep sleep was predicted. Looking at REM sleep for the third night, we see that this was pretty bad. Almost no REM sleep was detected for this night at all, which is not a likely real life scenario. Which also means we would not be able to see any of the sleep cycles for this night. REM sleep detection for the fourth night was perhaps slightly better, though I did detect a lot of extra REM sleep for this night. Detecting the awake moments for the third night was not good, where it missed all of my awakenings, though admittedly they were pretty short awakenings. Now for the fourth night this was a lot better, with both of my awakenings being detected. Now sleep start detection for the third night was again delayed, but sleep end detection was spot on. And for the fourth night we again see a delay on detecting me falling asleep, but it also detects me as waking up too early. So far, it seems to me that the sleep tracking of the Venue 2 has definitely improved over the sleep tracking of the Venue SQ. Based on these individual nights, I would say it's good at detecting deep sleep, light sleep and at my longer awake moments. REM sleep detection was the thing that the Venue 2 seems to struggle with the most. To get an even more objective view of the results, let's calculate some statistics regarding the consistency between the sleep stages of the Venue 2 and the EEG device. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now enough self-promotion, let's see what the overview statistics say. First, let's look at the total percentage of each sleep stage the EEG device and the Venue 2 predicted. And here I display those percentages for the EEG device on the left and the Venue 2 on the right. Overall, these percentages show some agreement, though there are definitely some differences. The Venue 2 predicts too much deep sleep and too little light sleep. It also detects too much awake time, mostly because it detects me falling asleep too late and waking up too early. The amount of REM sleep over all nights was predicted okay since this percentage is not too far off. However, we already saw based on the individual nights that the timing of each of the individual sleep stages is also vital. Therefore, more important even than these total percentages is checking if the venue 2 predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time. And that's what I displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device and on the left the sleep stages according to the venue 2. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the venue 2. Now first, looking at deep sleep, we see that almost 80% of what was deep sleep was also correctly predicted as being deep sleep, which is pretty good. And if it was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep. Now light sleep also shows a decent accuracy, with 68% of what was light sleep also being predicted as light sleep. And if it was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. Now REM sleep prediction was not very good, as we saw before. Only 43% of what was REM sleep was also correctly predicted as REM sleep. Most REM sleep I had was actually predicted as being light sleep by the venue 2. Awake detection was okay, with 72% of the awake moments I had being correctly predicted as awake moments. However, as we saw before, it did predict some extra awake time. And if awake time was confused by the Venue 2, it was mostly confused with light sleep. Finally, I want to check if the Venue 2 detected me going to bed and waking up at the right time, which we already saw was a small problem based on the individual nights. On the vertical axis we have the different nights I tested the Venue 2, and on the horizontal axis is the time difference between the EEG device and the Venue 2 for waking up in yellow and falling asleep in blue. So a positive number means that it detected me as waking up or falling asleep later than in reality, and a negative number means it detected me as waking up or falling asleep earlier. As you can see, the Venue 2 does show some deviations in detecting me falling asleep and waking up. Based on the yellow dots, we can see detecting me as waking up too early a couple of times. And we can see based on the blue values that it always detected me falling asleep between 10 and 15 minutes too late. Now compared to a lot of other watches, this is not that accurate. Though it can be debated if these 15 to 20 minutes total make a real difference. Next, I wanna take a quick look at how the results of the Venue 2 compared to the results I showed in a video on the Venue SQ a few months ago. That is what I plotted here. On the left we have the results we saw before for the new Venue 2 and on the right we have a similar plot but now for the Garmin Venue SQ. As you can see, overall the performance of the Venue 2 is better than that for the Venue SQ. 
especially for deep sleep tracking, the performance seems to have vastly improved. However, REM sleep tracking appears to be difficult for both of them. So REM sleep tracking is definitely something that should be improved on Garmin watches in order for them to better track my sleep. Finally, I quickly want to show you how the Venue 2 compares to some of the better sleep trackers I've tested so far. That is what I plotted here. On the top left, we have the same plot we saw before, showing the results for the Venue 2. On the top right, we have the results for the Whoop Strap. On the bottom left, the results for the Fitbit Inspire 2. And on the bottom right, the Withing Sleep Analyzer, which you put under your mattress. As you can see, the Venue 2 performs quite well for deep sleep, light sleep and awake. However, its major issue compared to these other devices is tracking REM sleep. If we compare it, for instance, to the Fitbit Inspire 2, we see that all around the Fitbit Inspire 2 just performs much more consistent and better. However, I'm still happy that the Venue 2 seems to have improved compared to the sleep tracking of the Venue SQ. Overall, I think the Venue 2 performed okay when it comes to sleep tracking. It was pretty accurate for deep sleep, light sleep and awake time. It did miss some of my awakenings and it often detected me as waking up too early. The thing it struggled with most was detecting REM sleep. There was even one night where I detected almost no REM sleep for the majority of the night, which is very unlikely to happen in reality. So should you buy the Venue 2? Well, if you're specifically interested in sleep tracking, then I would suggest other devices. Now, don't get me wrong, the Garmin Venue 2 is not terrible, but there are better devices out there that cost less money. However, sleep tracking is not the only thing that the Venue 2 can do. So in a future video, I'll do a more comprehensive set of scientific tests on some of the other functionalities, like heart rate tracking, oxygen saturation, and step counting. If you want the best sleep tracking from a watch, get a Fitbit device, like a Fitbit Lux, Fitbit Sense, or Fitbit Inspire 2. Now the Withing Sleep Analyzer, which you put under your mattress, also performs reasonably well. Now the Whoop Strap also has good sleep tracking and good heart rate tracking. However, this is a subscription service, so much more expensive. Finally, I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the watch for a limited number of days and just on me, and it would be interesting to see how it performs on others. And also to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the watch against a full scientific polysomnography setup. We actually assembled a polysomnography device using OpenBCI components, and we're working on getting this software functional. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit, and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and also watch some of my other videos.